Hi everyone, Michelle Arnott here at Diamond Rock Glass Studio. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is my second virtual learning video and I am super excited about it and the future videos coming up. I feel like we can have a little bit more fun now that my first video is done. If you haven't seen it, it's about 55 minutes long and I really, really detail every step of the stained glass process from the cutting, the grinding, the foiling, the soldering, and the finishing. So now I can kind of fast forward through those steps and um, if you need a reference, go back to my first video. Um, and now with these future videos, they're gonna be much shorter. And like I said, I can fast forward through the parts that I've already explained. So I will be popping on the screen once in a while to say hi and also to talk about anything new that I have done that I didn't talk about in the first video. So today so far I worked with two new tools that I didn't in the first video. The first one is the contact paper. Uh, I was using clear contact paper that you saw me struggling with a little bit. That is a very, very useful tool and very helpful for larger projects. Um, today's project only had 22 pieces, so it probably wasn't totally necessary to use the contact paper. But if you're ever working on a really large piece where um, it's sitting on your table or your board for a few days or weeks or even months, um, that table or board is gonna get sh um, you know, nudged and those pieces will shift. Um, and where one day you have them grinded and fitting perfectly like a puzzle, one little shift will shift your pieces and now they're not fitting together perfectly, it can be very frustrating. So that contact paper is gonna keep your pieces in place and very helpful. So that's today's most helpful tip. Um, the other thing that I used today that I didn't talk about in the first video is the carbon paper. You saw that I made my pattern and then I needed a second pattern um, and my printer was too small to just copy it. So I used old school carbon paper to make my second pattern. I need one for a template and I need the other one to cut out the pieces to use for pattern pieces. So I'm probably gonna pop on later because I think I have one more thing to talk about that's new. Um, but thank you so much for joining me again today.
Hi again. I'm just about ready to start the soldering. When I get to the part where I put the zinc frame on two of the sides of the spider web, I am going to slow it down and explain what it is that I'm doing. Um, and then finally, um, the at the very end of the video, I am going to introduce a kit. Um, it's going to include all the glass. It's going to include the zinc frame. It's going to include two copies of the pattern and hooks um, and a spider. Um, so, uh, and I just wanted to explain the initial reason uh, for my virtual videos and virtual learning is that throughout the last few months, I have um, talked to people, either students or people within the community that I live in, um, have expressed an interest in having this hobby to do at home. So I decided to do some virtual learning and put some kids together. Um, and then along the way, some people said, oh, you should put that on YouTube. So I figured out how to have a YouTube channel and how to upload my videos to the, to YouTube. Um, I really don't know a whole lot about YouTube, but my videos will be on there. Um, again, this is just my second video, but I plan on doing lots of them. So for those of you out in the YouTube world that I don't know, um, I have a small studio in Tomahawk, Wisconsin, and um, I'm sure there's a way you can email me if there happens to be a kit that you want. Or I hope you just enjoy my videos. To all the Facebook followers that I have here at Diamond Rock Glass Studio, thank you so much, and let's get on to the soldering. Okay, so this is the part of the video where I'm slowing it down a little so you, I can explain to you what I'm doing here. Um, I'm just finishing tinning the outside. Remember um, how you just drag some solder from the seams and tin the outside that um, won't stick unless it's been fluxed. Um, I have very thin tin, uh, excuse me, zinc that we're going to be framing these two sides with. Um, so now... <clears throat> Uh, some some of the copper foil um, may be exposed, and that's why I tinned it. Usually, when I frame the frame, the zinc is larger and it covers more of it. But this is just very thin zinc, so we tin it just to make sure that there's no copper that shows through. Because the, the copper is so bright, it really shows up. So I'm going to somehow get this to hold in place. You can see what I'm trying to do, and um, that area in the corner, that um, 90 degree corner up here, that'll get filled in with solder. So I'm going to use some paper towel. Um, the flux is pretty greasy. Um, so you might want to wipe your piece down a little bit, um, but don't wash it. Just wipe it a little. I'm actually going to tape this zinc um, in place so I can solder it. Um, not on a seam, but just on the glass part. Um, and then I want to make sure this meets up the nice 90 degree angle, which it is there. Um, what's faced up is the front. Um, I usually, when I'm framing, ha I do the front first because that's the side that I want to make sure looks the nicest. This isn't really sticking to this piece of textured glass, but I'm going to see what I can do here. Okay, so now wherever you have the zinc meeting a seam, you want to flux there, even up here and in the corner. Um, that's where we're going to connect the zinc to our stained glass piece. So at all of those seams, we're going to put a little bit of solder, drop it down, and um, blend it into the seam. We're just going to drop some solder there and I want to get my fingers out of the way really quick because like I said the zinc conducts heat really well. 
So I want to get all these seams. And then up in this corner here, the 90 degree angle corner, I'm just going to drop some solder in there to fill in that hole. And um, so let me get these seams and then I'm going to turn it around and do the back. And then I'll be ready for the hooks. I think the front is about done. See, I got all these seams, all those seams. So I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna do the back, and then I'm gonna come back, put the hooks on. Okay, so I got the back side done uh, to connect the zinc frame. This is my front. Um, these are my little rings that I'm gonna be connecting either on this side or this side. First, I guess you need to decide how you want to hang it, if you want to hang it like this or like this. Um, I think I'm going to hang this one. Um, I think it's, I'm going to hang it this way. So I want to put the hooks on the back. I use a pair of mini needle nose pliers and you can see there is an opening on this ring. I want to solder that opening into the frame. So I'm gonna hold it on the opposite side. And this is a part um, I did go over in my first video how to put these hooks on, but I'm just gonna go over it again. Okay, so this is um, a little bit bigger hook, but um, I'm using the bigger ones. A smaller one would work, but the bigger one is gonna allow you to um, just hang these on a tack or something small like that. So I'm going to grab some solder and hold my hook in place and quickly drop the solder. So that one is done. And notice I'm going, I'm on a seam here. It doesn't always work out where you can do it on a seam, but if you can, it's usually a good idea to try and get it right on a seam. So um, let me move this up so you can see. I'm gonna flex this one, grab some solder, and tack that one in place. Okay, so we got that done. The next step, I am gonna take this to the sink. I'm gonna wash it with flux remover, and then I'm gonna take it back and do the patina, and then the polish. And then I'm going to connect a spider and...